Different ways on acting on climate change. Uh, we'll talk more about that now with a man from Nigeria. He is with us via Zoom from the United States. His name is Daniel Gbujechibudem, and he's an award-winning African-trained doctor. Um, he founded and runs, also runs a not-for-profit organization called uh, Team 54 Project International. And this group promotes climate awareness, uh, builds public commitment, and also triggers climate action in all levels, at all levels. And Daniel is with us via Zoom from New York. Please give him a warm hand. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name again is uh, Daniel Chidoben Bouje. I'm the founder and the CEO of Team 54 Project a not-for-profit based organization that raises awareness about the impact of climate change in over 169 nations. I know everybody will be worried. Is that possible? Well, you get to hear our secret formula. So everybody's uh, journey, everyone's journey through climate movement, every speaker you've heard today's journey through climate movement starts with a passion. And the way we're going to solve climate change is if we create a human individual passion. However, we coalesce together as a forum or we coalesce together as consigned citizens. So my climate journey began uh, just like I said, as an African, an African from a minority tribe called the Igbo people. Now, we are predominantly in the southeastern part of my country, Nigeria and we have members all across the world. However, the key thing about this individual, who happens to be myself, my picture six months ago, was that I am born to make a difference. I've always known that, that there has to be something much better than what I am seeing currently in my country, I am experiencing currently in Africa, I am seeing all across the world. Sadly, climate change gave me that vehicle to be able to have a clearer vision of what I want to be. It requires good education and good mentorship. And the good mentorship started from when I met the former vice president under Bill Clinton's time, Mr. Algo, who spoke to me for eight minutes. Eight minutes that define everything. He had shown me what the future would be in 2020, in 2017. It inspired me to start to tell our story to start to bring on board our African perspective on how climate change is impacting on agriculture, on health, on the social economic fabrics that determine the growth of any nation. And these are some of the things we've done. So I was able to mobilize uh, a lot of people and thanks to the organization that I originally before now joined the World Medical Association. I happened to be on that association and they actually sent me as the first African, the first black African to represent them at the COPE. So I have represented the World Medical Association at the COPE 22 and 23. And then I have sent my own team to the COPE in Poland. So the problem now is we have a challenge. Some of the challenges of climate action are actually as a result of uh, Africans still having some pre colonial mentalities. Africans having absence of leadership with respect to their government, showing the direction that they want. Now, our colonial masters somehow have been able to fuse to now be packaged as global corporate leaders. Don't get me wrong, some corporate leaders are living up to expectation, but we need more. Now, the idea and the mentality of a corporate world is to exploit the sufferings of people at the expense of a common shared goals, which as we know, is what they make their profit from. So every society looks up to their leaders. Every society should have a leader that creates that di direction for the future, especially the future of the young ones. Hence the creation of Team 54 Project. Like I said, it's a brand that has identified unique ways that we can help climate action and build resilience at either global level or at the local level. And we've only been two years old and we have gotten results. So we have laid an innovative framework, get up to help community, you understand, get better effective citizens. 
Effective citizens who are proactive will always bring about leaders who are visionary. So the Team 54 project equally also organizes and uh, facilitates climate training workshops where we raise awareness about the negative impact on climate change on existing system. By existing system, we mean the system that we've always known for 150 years, which includes agriculture, the health, the educational system, and the financial institution. So climate change has disproportionately affected all the system to our detriment. Now, this exposure of training workshop, taking climate action in our own formula, has, ex has created uh, uh, an inspired, continuous membership participation, including our partners who are known all over the world. So the strong conviction to make Earth Green Again is possible. And these are our members from Pacific Island nations, from West Africa, from uh, Bolivia, in the Philippines, the Philippine government hosted our first year anniversary in 2017. We have active members in India. We have active members in Belgrade, in, in Europe. We have active members in Mexico. Now, how were we able to do this? We call it the all-inclusive concept. It is simple. The solutions are out there. We need to understand the sound climate science. But not only that, bring in the human component of things. People want to know of what role will I be in addressing this issue that seems to overwhelm us? What can I bring on board? I do not know 450 parts per million. I don't know what that means, but I have these skills. So Team 54 Project is saying that we can harness the talent, the skill of every single person on earth. The combination of that concept with climate action strengthens participation and will help the global and local involvement. This is the model that we have reproduced in 160 countries, and it has led to great impact. Impact in Congo, impact in Yemen. As we speak in Yemen, we are actively on ground ensuring to sensitize people on the sanitation crisis they have in the camps in Eden. Our members here in the US always engage from time to time with known authorities. This is our formula that works. It is simple, that climate science education with human inclusion, by human inclusion, we say talents and skills that every individual have, every single individual has. You have something you can offer. If you're a musician, you can sing for climate change. We can help you develop the content for it. If you're a footballer, you can. Just last week, uh, one of our members in Nigeria did organize a football match, tagged Team Climate Action against Team Climate Change. And the Team Climate Action did win. 250 people watched the match in West Africa, Ogun State, and he was able to deliver a eight minutes action. And as we speak today, they have plans of planting trees and looking for better ways to make things better. This is what we call the Team 54 Project Effect, the effect that has created ripples across the globe, that has got us international recognition at the United Nations, that has allowed governments like China and Philippines and the Nigerian government to recognize that these people have a way of bringing on board the need, needed, needed language to change. Media houses have equally carried our story. And our partners across the world, like Let's Do It World, have been able to even give us accolade that we have been able to mobilize in addressing the issue of solid waste just by bringing on board the better understanding of science, the passion of our people, and then the need to take action. These are some of the engagements that we've done. On the top right is the UN Youth Envoy at a Youth Summit meeting last year. In the center is me trying to discuss with our member a press conference I gave at the United Nations. And just down my right corner is the current Deputy Secretary General United Nations uh, uh, um, organization. Now the point is this, that if at all we are to make headway in climate change, we actually need everyone on board. Everyone is important, including those that are physically challenged, including those that are disproportionately affected. So we all need to bring uh, uh, all our games, all our talents, all our skills into one if we must. And we must do that by transiting to climate smart ways. Climate smart ways, I mean, for us in Team 54 Project, are ways that will not affect the environment, ways that will make you ecologically responsible. 
to meet the demands of mankind, especially our basic needs in the area of food, water security, and decent jobs. And the only ways we can do this is if we move away to renewable energy, not complicated energy, renewable clean energy from primary sources. If we start to do climate smart agricultural ways, if we start to do climate smart transportation ways, if we start to think of the green economy, an economy that will ensure as much as possible that the sufferings of the people are not the primary cause for profit, rather the respect for environment, respect for sanctity of people, and the fact that we are providing a better future for children we know too well, do not have the capacity right now, but because of our inactions over the years we need. This is why we have to be responsible. We are driving climate awareness into climate action. That's our motto. That's what we stand for. That is Team 54 Project Mantra. Together, the solution to solve the crisis is with us. Join us today and happy Earth Day. Thank you for having me.